you've done your experiment and you've collected data and you have a really nice data table now. With a data table that's really well set up already, you can make a really nice graph easily in Excel. I think we've done this before this year. I'm not quite... I think we did. This year's been crazy. Let's make a graph anyway. So in your um, blank Excel file that I gave you, go ahead and type in your data table the way that you have it on your sheet. Um, or you can make it look like this one. Most students collected data every five minutes. If you're an online student, we collected it only every 15 minutes and just twice. So yours would say like 15 minutes here, 30 minutes here, and these would be blank. You can type this anywhere. It doesn't really matter where you start. Then your variables, and you can slide these over, are on the, your independent variable is on the left side. So this is just an example of a group that may have changed the temperature of the water. You may have changed the amount of yeast, so you can put those things here. You may have changed the type of sugar. And in my online class, we had six different things, so you would add three more down here with the different types of sugar that we used. However you did it, type it in um, the way that your group did it. Then, from here, Excel is a really nice way to just make a quick graph. And the reason we make graphs in science is because humans are very visual. Instead of reading all of these numbers, it's just way easier to see a bunch of lines or bars to quickly compare things. In this case, we um, measured things as they went through time. So we definitely want our x-axis to be time. Let's see, I think I have some fake data for here. No, I thought I had some fake data. All right, just a second. Okay, I found it. Here's some fake data. I don't use this data. I just made it up. Um, so we were talking about we want the x-axis to be time, and then we want the y-axis, wait, I'm backwards, the y-axis to be how big the balloon is or how much CO2 is being produced in whatever situation you have. So these should be the measurements you got in centimeters uh, of all the different times of your three or however many different uh, independent uh, variables that you had. So from here, to make a graph, it's really simple. You just highlight your data, click on Insert, click on We want a line graph because lines show how things change through time. Bar graphs are like just buckets of things, but this isn't like a bucket of things. This is how things change through time, so we click on Line Graph. Just click the first one for now, see how that looks. Oh my god, it's beautiful. Okay, so we have the key down here, warm water in blue, room temperature in orange, cold water. And then from here, we can see trends a little bit easier, or actually a lot easier, than reading numbers. And this is why we make graphs. You can change this chart title um, if you'd like. And then from here, hit Control c or you can right-click and hit copy, I'd like for you to bring this over into our PowerPoint that we've been working on the last couple days. So right after slide four, your data, hit the button that says new slide, and let's see, it doesn't matter, blank, actually blank is fine. Add a slide, it's a blank slide, and then control V or paste into, oh, and there's some nice design ideas. Oh, it's beautiful. That way you'll have your data table and then your graph here. From here, it's probably a little easier to come up with some conclusions because you can see the trends of how things changed through time. So go ahead and answer, if you haven't already, the questions in slide 6 and 7. And um, that's it. Let me know if you have questions.